Welcome to Season 2 of BI TV, your fortnightly recap of global business intelligence and analytics news, views and reviews. The first article we explored for this season was a piece penned for the Rust Report by guest blogger and CEO of Red Rock Consulting, Jonathan Rubenstein. Rubenstein fears that history is repeating itself and that the hype around big data will ultimately lead to backlash and diminished credibility. He likens the phenomenon to Y2K hysteria around the turn of the millennium. The article, titled Forget Big Data, We Need Smart Data, cites comments made by the CTO behind Barack Obama's famed political campaigns, Harper Reid. Presenting as last year's CBIT keynote in Sydney, Reid described big data as bovine excrement, stating that big data was a storage challenge, which was actually solved back in 2007. Today's biggest data challenge, according to Reid, is to discover better ways to quickly analyse and derive actionable insights from that data. Rubenstein's contention is that we don't need big data, we need smart data. He says that we're so busy collecting all this data, but we aren't learning anything from it. This is what the industry needs to solve. As many others have pointed out, with all the trading data and predictive models available, we still didn't see the GFC coming. He concludes by arguing that what's stopping most organisations from turning exploding data volumes into smart data is a large skills gap. Rubenstein writes that this requires a unique blend of mathematics, psychology and business acumen. I am not sure universities are investing enough in cultivating these skills and businesses don't know where to find them. So what do you think? Is Rubenstein right? Paul Rubens, a 20-year veteran of enterprise technology journalism, compiled an interesting piece for enterpriseappstoday.com. His Six Big Business Intelligence Mistakes article begins by citing two findings released by analyst firm Gartner. Gartner estimates that the worldwide BI market is now worth over $14 billion. However, its 2014 Magic Quadrant for BI and Analytics Platforms report found that many companies had struggled to get value from their deployments in 2013. The report mentions highly IT-centric and hard-to-use software as two critical barriers to return on investment. The report stated that, while analytical capabilities were deployed, they were never fully embraced by the majority of business users, managers and analysts, primarily because most considered these too difficult to use for many analytical use cases. As a result, Rubens says that many companies are looking to complement or even replace the existing BI platforms over the coming months. For those planning to invest or reinvest, Rubens outlines six common BI investment mistakes to avoid. One, giving too much control to IT departments or to users. Rubens explains that IT control deployments often focus too heavily on issues such as stability and security without considering the end user experience. However, he, qu he quotes forest research analyst Boris Evelson, who contends that if end users aren't properly supported by IT, the solution can lack robustness and security, whilst outputs can suffer from a lack of accuracy and dependability. Two, ignoring users' BI needs. This time, Rubens references uh, words of wisdom from Gartner's Rita Salam, who underscores the importance of matching system capabilities with what users actually need. To achieve this, Rubens says that user requirements should be carefully collected and documented with that information and the end users themselves taking a prominent role in the tool selection process. Three, underestimating costs of training and user enablement. Many BI solutions are being continually targeted towards business users. However, well-planned and ongoing training is required to ensure long-term user engagement and ROI, even in a self-service BI environment. Four, ignoring future business intelligence requirements. Rubens again notes research from Gartner that indicates that around half of all organisations intend to use cloud-based BI at some point in the future. With this in mind, he suggests that organisations looking to engage a new BI provider should ensure that their chosen vendor offers cloud-based deployment options. Five, trying to go it alone. Unless you have sufficient in-house knowledge, 
Don't use a DIY approach when it comes to integrating your new BI platform with your existing systems. In the words of Forrest and Muse Boris Evelson, if you do so, you risk delays and cost escalation, and ultimately, end users may not get value from the system. Six, trying to save money by avoiding BI altogether. Finally, Rubens argues that avoiding BI completely and maintaining the spreadsheet status quo will lead to a number of significant issues, particularly as your business and the volume of data required for reporting and analytics increases. Rubens lists data volume restrictions, spreadsheet silos, multiple versions of the truth, and security risks as noteworthy symptoms of Excel-based reporting. When Implementations Fail, Lessons and 10 Best Practices for BI Professionals was an article that drew our attention with its quirky comparisons. This piece, written by Principal Consultant for MAS Strategies, Michael Schiff, and published on tdwi.org, outlines 10 best practices to help BI pros avoid deployment disaster. But what makes it particularly unique is the fact that Schiff pinpoints implementation problems experienced by America's Affordable Care Act website rollout during drawing lessons from these blunders and applying them to a BI environment. Schiff identifies many implementation issues associated with the healthcare.gov website, including its premature productionization, inability to support concurrent users, system freezes, loss of user input data, and integration problems with other systems. Schiff said that these issues were principally caused by late scope changes, the need to integrate many databases, insufficient code reviews, and seemingly poor project management. The 10 BI deployment best practices Schiff extracts from this scenario include, closely monitor implementation schedules and issue warnings when problems arise that might delay the go-live date. Be aware that the executive supporting the implementation may have different agendas or metrics for success, such as receiving a bonus for meeting deadlines, regardless of the impact. Make sure written status reports reflect problems. Avoid painting a rosy picture when a serious thorn is uncovered. Develop robust test plans for the solution itself, system integration and user acceptance. Ensure that training and operational procedures are part of your project plan, not an afterthought. Avoid shortcuts that may compromise system credibility. Data quality should be addressed as part of the project, not an after the fact when a problem is discovered. When issues are identified, don't try to fix them all at once. Prioritise them. If something does go wrong, encourage cooperation to fix the problem and avoid finger pointing. Uh, the buck stops here person should bear ultimate responsibility for the implementation, not a committee. And lastly, recognise that Unless it involves a compliance issue, an implementation date is a target, not an absolute necessity. Piece written by Principal Analyst at CBIG Consulting, John Harmon. Appearing on informationmanagement.com entitled, When Agile BI is Not Agile, the article offers six key approaches that can assist Agile BI development to work in practice, not just theory. Number one, Three week cycles work well. Three weeks allows you to complete two and a half weeks of work, then spend a few days on planning, high level design, and retrospectives. Two, data is a feature too. One of the key assets of a BI project is the data itself. You don't have to deliver reports. A successful sprint can deliver a couple of core dimensions. Three, plan for refactoring. In a BI project, you'll often uncover many of your real data issues once you've built your complete star schema. Then you can write and perform queries to slice and dice data in different ways. Four, know your constituency so that you know what's achievable. Five, don't forget the retrospective. One of the key tenets of agile development is refining your approach and adapting to change. That means looking at what you did, thinking about how you can improve upon that and continually getting better. Six, be agile, not agile. Being agile does not mean you have to follow exactly what another Scrum project did. Leverage the knowledge gained from prior work, but evolve to do what is best for yours. The interactive portion of this episode directs your attention towards two thought-provoking discussions taking place on LinkedIn. 
The first conversation which is instigated by the question, why do BI implementations fail? And can be found on the Business Intelligence Professionals Group. The other asks, what advancements do you see in big data in 2014? You can join the conversation on the Business Intelligence, Big Data, Analytics, MIS Reporting and Database Group. Well, that's it for another instalment of BITV. Thanks for your company and we'll see you next time.